Hey YouTube, this is Trains and Destinations, and in today's video, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick unboxing of a new player into the budget phone market. And so, here it is. This is the OnePlus Nord N100. Now, the unique thing about this phone is that this is the cheapest phone that OnePlus has ever made, the Nord N100. It came out just a few weeks ago at the time of me making this video. I am making this video in January 2021. This phone was announced and released, I believe, at the beginning of this month. And now OnePlus is a well-known company if you are a phone enthusiast. But if you're not a phone enthusiast, uh, then you probably have never heard of OnePlus. You know, this is the, this is the Chinese phone maker that originally created the flagship killer phone a few years ago. Of course, today their phones are essentially near flagships. And so now OnePlus has different lines of phones. You have their more high-end phones like the OnePlus 6T, 7, 7T, 8, 8 Pro, etc. And then their budget line, which is known as the Nord line. And in the Nord line, you have essentially three phones in the Nord line. This N100 is the cheapest. Then above that, you have the N10 5G, and then above that, you have the standard OnePlus Nord. Now, in the United States, OnePlus phones are very rare because only until recently, they are even offered on carriers such as T-Mobile. Before that, they were uh, GSM unlocked phones, and you know, quite frankly, they were very, very scarce. But I do think that OnePlus wants to gain a bigger foothold in the United States market which is why now you're seeing their phones are becoming available on more and more carriers. And in this case with the N100, they're releasing budget phones um, at very, very competitive prices. And what makes the N100 unique along with the N10 5G is that these phones are compatible for both GSM and CDMA carriers. So this phone can work on all major US carriers or work at this point on all three major US carriers, which, Again, it's a pretty big deal as OnePlus phones historically were GSM only. So this is pretty good. This is pretty good. And this sets up the phone pretty well to take on the likes of Motorola and Samsung. The budget phone market has really, really heated up recently. I'll twist the box over to get a better, you know, just a different angle. But as I was saying, the budget phone market has really heated up. You have the Samsung Galaxy A line, which is really impressive, especially you know, the Galaxy A51, for example, giving you a lot for your money. Of course, you have blue phones. In some respects, you have Nokia phones. But for a long time, the main budget player was Motorola, especially the Moto G line. For years, the Moto G has dominated the budget phone market, but things have changed. Um, like I said, the Samsung Galaxy A line uh, is really impressive. You have the Google Pixel 3a and now the 4a, which is really impressive. Of course, you have the $400 iPhone SE 2. So the budget phone market is really heating up. And of course you have blue phones among others. And so this is now OnePlus's entry into the budget phone market. And so what I'll do now is go over the specs of the N100 and why for the price on paper, it does sound really good. So the OnePlus Nord N100 costs $180. And for that, you are getting a 6.5 inch display. I believe it, exactly it is 6.53 inches. Now it is a 720p display, but still it's a six and a half inch display. It's a very big screen. It has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So massive, massive battery for a phone that again is only $180. You get four gigabytes of RAM as well as 64 gigabytes of storage, which is a really, really good combo for $180. I mean, for example, if you were to get the 2021 Moto G Play, uh, that phone only has 32 gigs of storage and three gigs of RAM. So compared to that phone, which is around the same price, this phone has an extra gig of RAM and double the storage. Now the asterisk, of course, is that that phone has a Snapdragon 600 series processor. This phone, unfortunately, only has a Snapdragon 460 processor. Now it is an octa-core chip, but it is a 400 series processor. So it'll be pretty interesting to see if this phone is slow. It's obviously not gonna be fast, but I'm hoping that it won't be too, too bad. So, but still, those basic specs are not bad. And I should also mention that the display is 90 Hertz. 
So it's a 720p IPS 90 hertz display, really impressive, 5,000 milliamp hour battery, pretty impressive. Uh, four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage on a sub $200 phone is also quite impressive. This phone also has uh, triple cameras. Now, how many of these cameras are actually usable? Really, it's only one. And I'll show that as I you know show off the phone later in the video. But nevertheless, on paper, it has triple cameras. It has 18 watt fast charging. And so on paper, this phone really does look like a winner and it does look really strong to take on the likes of the Moto G line and blue phones and the Samsung offerings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so I have sliced off the bottom. We'll go ahead and we'll carefully remove the plastic here. I will say that this is a really nice looking phone box. And again, for a sub $200 phone, this really doesn't look that far off from a uh, flagship phone box. So I am pretty impressed with that. That is satisfying right there. I mean, this is really nice. I will say this is really nice packaging. Typically when you get a sub $200 phone, it comes in a very basic box. But as you can see, this is sort of the same unboxing experience you get for a higher end phone. So obviously you got your pamphlets there, which we'll get into. And then here there's even a little pull tab, which helps you take the phone out of the box. And ooh, look at that. So underneath the flap, you have your massive 18 watt charging brick. So you can see, big boy charger. And you have a red charging cable. So OnePlus is pretty much known for the red charging cables. I honestly didn't think that you would get that with your cheapest phone, but there you go. You got your uh, red USB Type-C charging cable, and this looks absolutely amazing. Man, this thing looks sharp. So I'm very glad for that. Now, 18 watt fast charging is not super fast, especially not for a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, but still, still, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> and I like it too that um, when it's on the box, this, this flap has a little cutout. So it's like they really wanted to show off that red charger. So good on them, good on them. All right, so let's now take a look at the flap here. So once you open up the flap, right there you're greeted by a SIM tool, so that's nice to see. Then you got your safety information. Uh, you also got a quick start guide, which I'm not gonna take a look at because it's pretty obvious. Um, you know, so, you know, just basic stuff. But, you know, I gotta say, the presentation is uh, spot on. This is some really, really good presentation. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the phone itself. So here is the phone. It's really not that bad. The phone, I believe, has a 20 by nine aspect ratio. And so because of that, even though it's a very tall phone, as you can see, I have smaller hands, but I am able to grip this pretty decently in one hand, so it's not too bad. Let's go ahead and unpeel it. Or let's see, I, oh, never mind. Nope, the phone just slides downward like that. Alrighty, so this color is known as Midnight Frost. Um, I cover up the eye and the eyes. I show you the back of the phone. Now, this is a plastic back. As you can see, it is a bit of a frosted look, so it's not quite matte, but it's not glossy either. It's like in between. I kind of like it. And as you can see, you got your OnePlus logo and your name down there. You have a rear mounted fingerprint sensor right there. So that's nice to see. And here are your three cameras that I mentioned. Now, the reason why I said that, you know, you only have one usable camera is because the main camera is a 13 megapixel camera. I believe with an f 2.2 aperture now in terms of the other two cameras they're basically there for show so the other two cameras one camera is a depth sensor that's just used to aid in portrait shots and then the other camera which i believe is this middle one is a two megapixel macro camera so obviously macro shots that's a very niche thing and so yes really it does have three cameras but again, two of the cameras are basically useless. And so they're only on here just to make it look good, really, which honestly, you know, hey, it's a sub $200 phone. I think I'll forgive them for that.
Now on the side of the phone here, it's a little hard to see, but it's it's sort of like a glossy dark bluish navy color. And you do got your power button here on the right side. You do got a little bit of a camera bump, but it's not that bad. I've seen worse. And then this is the front of the phone. Let me put in the charger so you can see the screen. So there you go, your charger goes in there at the bottom. Oh, there you go, the phone's actually starting up. But also on the bottom, you do have a, a headphone jack, so that's really nice to see. Yep, on the bottom, you get, yep, your headphone jack. And there you go, so you see the battery's charging, it's at 50%. And as you can see, you know, the bezels aren't that bad. So obviously this doesn't have the thinnest bezels in the world, but still, this is, for a sub $200 phone, it's pretty impressive that this is pretty full screen, and you do got that whole punch camera there and so it's really not that bad you know i am impressed with this design and on the left hand side of the phone of course you got your volume rocker and then above that you got your sim tray which also i believe has a slot for a micro sd card slot so pretty impressive as you can see this phone is pretty pretty darn thin especially for having you know such a big battery inside so let's go ahead and turn it on briefly There we go. So we got OnePlus powered by Android. Um, I can tell that the vibration motor in this sounds pretty cheap, although hopefully it won't be too bad, but it doesn't feel great. I'll say that, it doesn't feel great. So you got your little startup animation there, pretty cute. And so like I said, so spec-wise, this does have the Snapdragon 460, four gigs of RAM, and 64 gigs of storage. So again, pretty darn impressive for a you know $180 phone. And there you go. So this is what the screen looks like. Honestly, it doesn't look that bad. You know, so it is only 720p, but that being said, unless you like really look close at the phone, you really, you know, you don't see the pixels, you know, unless you have the phone uh, you know very close. And from here, you can also see the bezels. So again, I would say for a budget phone, these bezels are perfectly acceptable. This is a 6.53 inch display. You know, it's just really impressive how budget phones have these massive screens now. You know, it wasn't that long ago when, you know, budget phones had a four inch display or five inch display. So this is really impressive. Now, personally, I'm a fan of smaller phones. My main phone is a um, Google Pixel 3a and yeah. You can clearly see the difference between the two. But, you know, that being said, I'm not unopposed to bigger phones. I just prefer smaller phones because they're easier to hold. But, you know, nevertheless, though, this does look pretty nice. The buttons feel good, too. You know, very clicky, very tactile. It's quite nice. And as you can see, responsiveness is pretty good. And uh, there's your hole punch. As you can see, it's not even for some reason. You can see it's not symmetrical to the corner, but, you know, again, nothing too bad, you know. I, really, first impressions are pretty positive. I would say, at worst, maybe this design's a little bland, but, again, it's a $180 phone, and I gotta say that, you know, first impressions, um, I'd say, are pretty positive. So, anyway, thank you for watching my unboxing of the OnePlus Nord and 100.